rejoice in the presence of the Lord as we journey together in his perfect love and peace. Once again, you are welcome. Thank you so much, Elder Scott and Reverend Johnson, for your beautiful, beautiful scripture, and as well as our welcome. And at this time, I'd like for you to just find someone near you and tell them, I'm so glad you made it, and I mean that. I'm so glad you made it. I'm so glad you made it. And I mean that. Yes, I do. Yeah. Many times we come in here and we sit next to folks that we don't even say a word. But we are holy people. We are sanctified. We are full of, we are full of love. And our chief overseer was teaching us about peace. Somebody need peace, don't you? Uh, don't, don't leave home. Don't leave here without it. Amen. God bless you, and we thank you for that, being for your participation. At this time, we're going to ask our secretary to come as she will share with you our announcement, and then the ministry of giving, giving will be done by the Bishop Tommy Phillips, my pastor. And while, as I Introduce my...
and I hear from him. So you've got about an hour to ask questions and to really listen to his wisdom. And so we're going to do that one more time tomorrow. And so he is yielding this spot uh, for one of the other bishops to come and to uh, give us wisdom from the Word of God. And so I'm going to introduce that bishop in just one second. But before I do that, I heard that uh, tomorrow, if I'm correct, is Bishop Tommy Phillips, who I have the privilege of serving with in India. Uh, tomorrow is his birthday. Am I right about that, Bishop Phillips? Okay, thank God. We we just bless God for Bishop Phillips before the offering. He's got his birthday tomorrow, uh, and I'm excited. I don't know how old he is. Maybe uh, 40? No, 60. It's his 60th birthday. Praise the Lord. However, however, yesterday, yesterday was Bishop Kelly Allen's birthday, and Bishop Allen decided to celebrate his birthday with the East Coast Reformer. So East Coast Reformer is Bishop Allen's birthday. He's 60 years old. Come on, South Carolina Diocese two weeks ago. And so for his birthday, we want to give you the night off, Bishop Allen. But we do want you to prepare your hearts and minds because Bishop M.C. Brown, very capable prognosticator of the gospel of Jesus Christ, is going to share with us in way of the Institute lesson. Bishop Brown is the pastor of the House of God Church in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yes, There's some Holy Ghost work going on in Las Vegas. So when y'all take y'all little vacations to Las Vegas, Chief Overseer wants you all to also make certain that you make a stop by 615 West Van Buren so that you can have a Holy Ghost good time. Bishop Ipsy Brown also serves with us in India and is the newly appointed Assistant State Bishop of the Diocese of the District of Columbia, Maryland, and Virginia. Come on, let's bless God and give him a round of applause for that. Most recently, Bishop M.C. Brown, as you all know, he has served as college president of multiple colleges, provost, dean, and so many other accolades. He has, as you would say, more degrees than a thermometer. But we have been privileged here in the House of God to have him, by special appointment of our chief overseer, to serve as our newly appointed interim president of the House of God Academy and Bible College. So I'm asking at this time if you would give a warm Florida East Coast Diocese welcome to mm -hmm. Bishop M.C. Brown as he comes with our Institute lesson. Here we go. Maxx to pick it up. 
Uh, I did not realize I was in Judeo-Christian area, and so the young man who checked me out had a yarmulke on his head. I had not seen that in Las Vegas. I had to Google it to find out why he had this prayer cap on his head. And what I learned is that the Jewish Orthodox people wear the yarmulke to remind them of the Passover. Uh, that that night when God rolled through the city and smote the firstborn, that the word declared that when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And so they wear the cap so that when God is passing over, that he will remember them. I think that if anybody ought to thank God for the Passover, it's foreign. There's been a whole lot of hurricanes passing over you. And God was kind and merciful. Hallelujah, we serve God our chief overseer to the leadership. I thank God he passed over. You know, it didn't have to be like it was because he passed over you and messed up North Carolina. But you are still here with no visible signs of his displeasure upon you. You ought to have enough good courtesy to tell God thank you. Just have good manners, good manners, and tell God thank you. Amen. We, we pray for this institute lesson that you will receive the impartation. The overseer has assigned us the theme of peace tonight. This whole week we are focused on peace and it is so interesting that God had already deposited the word in his heart, in his mind, and in his lessons for such a time as this. Do I have any Keith Dominion people in the house tonight? Well, in the decree book on page 32 it says, We believe the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth is the waiting or preparing bride of Christ. And that when she is sufficiently prepared and made glorious without spot or wrinkle, Christ will catch his bride away to the marriage supper of the Lamb to live and reign with him for a period of a thousand years. And that in this, all the dead in Christ will rise first. And at the sounding of the first trumpet, there's a lesson tonight coming from this particular reading of the decree and the book of John chapter 16. John chapter 16, just two verses, and I will move quickly out of the way. There's a preacher in the house. I just want to tell you three things. John 16, chapter, chapter 16, verse 32 verse 33. Do you have it? Can you say amen? You're going to need this later this week. I'll just wait on you. You have it? Say amen. Amen. John 16, 32 through 33 says, Behold the hour cometh, and now is that hour that you are about to be scattered, every man to his own, and you will be left alone, but yet you will not be alone. Because the Father is with you. He says, these things have I spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. In the world, you're about to have some tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. This institute lesson tonight is just simply the three C's of peace. A few weeks ago, I taught the Institute lesson, and I said that hell had broken loose on the earth. And I need you to know that we have entered a time of trouble such as never was since there has been a nation. But I remind you that 1 John says to us, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. I know you had your candidate, but that's all right. That candidate was in the world. 
And I need you to know it does not matter who's in the White House. You remember George Washington, he's gone. You remember Abraham Lincoln, he's gone. You remember Bill Clinton, he's gone. He says, and the world passeth away. And the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You better wake up and pay attention. He says, little children, it is the last time. And as I have told you, the Antichrist shall come. Even now there is many Antichrists. Whereby you know it is the last time. I need you to know in Florida that I flew all the way from Las Vegas to remind you that this world is not your home. You're just passing through. I've been getting texts ever since Tuesday, and people say they need prayer. They say they need encouragement. Let me tell you, life has the ability to turn your holiday into horror, your festival into funeral, your, your feast into famine, your celebration into crime, and everybody says they feel down and depressed, but do you know God reigns on the just and the unjust? He can let the wheat and the tail grow together. And he said, when I come, I'll do the separating. He said, don't think it's strange when these troubles come upon you. He said, but rejoice and be exceeding. Let anybody rejoice this today. All day Tuesday, I said, this is the day that the Lord has made. And, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad. And the God I serve is not a Democrat. He, he's not a Republican. He, he doesn't have to be elected every four years. He's God on I got good news. Hey, no trouble can take you to a place God can't keep you. He says, you don't have a high priest that can't be touched with your infirmities. He said, come boldly to the throne of grace and you can find help in your time of need. Don't be sad about what happened Tuesday. David said, lift up your hands, O ye gates and the king of glory. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. I got texts. I, I got emails. People say they're tired. I, I talked to one friend. He said, I'm never voting again. Some people said they were nauseous. Some, some people said they had migraines. Some people said they had, they had anxiety. They're taking night will and, and all kinds of pills. But the Bible says, these things I have spoken that you might have peace. He said, and be a good cheer because I have overcome the world. Church of the living God, we've been here since 1903. We were born right after slavery, but we're still here. We witnessed Jim Crow, but we're still here. We witnessed Reconstruction, but we're still here. We witnessed Trayvon Martin and, and George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, but we're still here. The weather giving us hurricanes and floods, but we're still here. Somebody ought to say, God is in control. God is in control. The devil is a liar. He's trying to oppress us and depress us and got saints walking around looking sad. But the Bible I read says, I have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has an interest your mind what God is getting ready to do for you. This whole thing is just a setup. My God, my God, I'd be praising him. And if you got this kind of trouble, that means God must be getting ready to elevate you. I, somebody else can say, I refuse to give up. I, I refuse to quit. I, I refuse to hide my praise. I just want to say, Lord, I thank you. Another thing, I, I'm not preaching tonight. I'm just going to teach this. Because, because I got a feeling that during these next four years, a whole lot of people about to be saved. I got a feeling these next four years, a whole lot of people about to be healed. I got a feeling a whole lot of people about to be delivered because he said, surely I have seen the affliction of my people and I come down and save you. And if he did it before, he'll do it again. Let me, let me, let me give you... Let me 
give you, let me give you these three C's and move out your way. Yo, I, I was growing up, I was growing up, I don't know if you had that kind of grandma. You had a picture of uh, 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 Martin Luther King, and you had one of John F. Kennedy, and you had one of the white Jesus with the long hair. But right beside that, there was another plaque, and it says, God grant me the serenity. Y'all don't remember that? To accept the things that I cannot change, and, and courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. You ought to be smart enough to know God is sending you up. God is just setting you up. He, he's just setting you up. He said, they had to wait on the Lord. Don't, don't be in the rush. The man hadn't even got inaugurated yet. He said, he said wait on the Lord and, and be of good courage. He, he, said, he said, they that wait shall, shall renew their strength. They'll, they'll mount up with wings and eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. No matter what they say on Fox News, you you gonna have some trouble. You gonna have some trouble. Trouble, trouble is coming. You gonna have trouble in the world. You gonna have trouble in the White House. You gonna have trouble in the Congress. But guess what? The House of God is still gonna be full of power. The House of God will still be full of prayer. The House of God will be filled with praise, and you going to have peace. Gonna have peace. Yeah. You said, you said, what is peace? I'm, I'm glad you asked. Peace means you're not mad about the conflict. Peace, peace means you got tranquility. Peace, peace says you got harmony. They, they used to say, this, a, they say, this joy that I have, the, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. You got to remember there's a peace of God that passes all understanding. And he said, my peace, I'm going to what? Leave with you. If you got it, you ought to have peace. Anybody got the Holy Ghost? Anybody got the Holy Ghost? Well, I like how he said in Timothy, you ought to stir up the gift. Somebody say, God, I thank you for my peace. Well, these three seasons, and I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. The first thing you need to do in this season, you need to expect chaos. Yes. The text says, the text says, the hour is coming, and now is the hour you gonna have trouble. So why are you sitting around here? Sanctified and complaining about the election. You ought to say, I expected this. Yeah, yeah. God said, I'm gonna have some, some trials and tribulation. I'm, I'm gonna have some confusion. I'm gonna have some trouble. He said, In the last days, I'm not worried. They said, Well, Trump will start another war. I don't care. The Bible says, There shall be wars. Huh? And who was the war? He said, But the end, guess what? Ain't yet, baby. I don't care how many wars they start. He said, he said, don't think it's strange. He said, there's going to be all kinds of commotion. There's going to be all kinds of trouble. But you got to learn to accept the chaos as a part of life. Baby, you got to be like a time and take a lick in it. Keep on ticking. You, you got to be prepared and encouraged that, that no matter what comes, no weapon formed against me shall be able. It didn't say it wouldn't form. It didn't say it wouldn't be inaugurated. It didn't say it wouldn't rain. But he said, it just won't work. Oh, my God. They tried to kill your grandmama, but she made it. They tried to cut off your money, but you made it. They said they would take away your job, but, but you made it. I don't know, but the old folk used to have a hymn book. Y'all don't read the hymns no more. But in this book it said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but holy lead on all the solid rock. Anybody standing on that rock today? Say faith is the substance that they come for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Why are you worrying about what happened in 2024? Do you realize the great thing that God has for you in 2025? If you can just hold on and, and hold up, they say you can't hurry God. No, you just got to wait. You you got to trust him and give him time. No, no matter how long it takes, he's a God you can't hurry. But but he'll be, you say, Brown just quoting Saul. You want the Bible? Here it is. Jeremiah 29 and 1. So never say, I know the thoughts that I have for you. They, they are good and not evil. And I'm going to bring you out of what you think you're going through. So, you ought to expect some chaos. And, 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 and given what happened 
this weak church ought to be packed. Because when you expect chaos, you ought to enjoy some company. Yeah, when, when folk die, you can't wait to get to the house. You got there in the kitchen eating green beans before the body is even is even good in the mortuary. You you already eating fried chicken and asking who bringing the potato salad. The Bible says you got to have some company. When trouble comes. That's some company. When trouble comes. He says, he says in the text, he says, he says, you gonna be alone. But you really not alone. Have mercy. It don't matter if your congressman left and didn't get reelected. You may be alone, but you're not alone. He said, because you got Jesus, and, and, and Jesus is enough. He said, you got to remember that you're not alone because God the Father is with you. He said, Lo, I'll be with you. Always, even until the end. He said, you yeah, know I'll walk, Lord, have mercy, to the valley and the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for God is with me. His rod and staff, they comfort me, Lord, have mercy. Anybody know God is a comforting people? He's a friend to the friendless. He's a heart fixer. He's a mind regulator. And, and you need to learn how to come back to church. Y'all are not hooked on Facebook Live. I'm going to hook on YouTube. But the Bible says, forsake not the assembly of yourself together as the manner of serving. And he said, the more you see trouble coming, you ought to run to the house. He said, when you see these things, stand in the holy place. Where is the holy place? Okay, the ground you standing on right now is holy ground. You need to be giving God some praise because he can, And the reason you want to come here is because he said when two or three get together, he said, I'll show up in the midst of them. Do you realize you can sit here alone by yourself? But when we get in God's house and start to clapping and the drums start beating and the guitar start going, and you start seeing somebody who you know God healed of cancer, somebody you know God brought out of an accident, somebody you know God kept their mind. Yeah, There's something about coming together. And when, you, when you come together, then you're going to have peace. I said, God, how you going to have peace? He said, I went to the list. He said, I'm Jehovah Jireh. I'm, I'm Jehovah Rapha. I'm, I'm Jehovah El Kadesh. I'm, I'm, so, I, I, I'm, I'm just, Jehovah Sikadu. But then I liked that one. He said, I'm Jehovah Shalom. Yeah. He said, I'm the God, your peace. I said, how are you going to be my peace? He said, Brown, go back and read the Isaiah. He said, for unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And the government shall not be in D.C. He said, it'll be on his
because I got this last part. He says, I have spoken this that you might have peace. And so when you expect chaos and, and, and you enjoy company, once you leave church, you ought to have some confidence. Yeah. You ought to have some confidence that, that everything is going to be all right. You ought to be able to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You, you ought to be able to say, hey, in all these things, I'm, I'm more than a conqueror through, through him that does it. You ought to be able to say, if God be for me, who can be against me? You ought to be able to say, because God is on my side, everything is going to be all right. I'm about to go over, but there was a preacher who said, preacher one side said, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. I studied that thing, and I said, you know, that's really bad theology. And the reality is that God said it. And that settles it. Whether you believe it or not. And because God put this in the text, I have discovered that no matter what happens, I'm going to have peace. I wish y'all wasn't so up and down here in Florida. God done bless y'all with this beautiful sanctuary. This is not, but, but Bishop Butler may be your overseer. But I remember when we was at Five Mile and we had space heaters with, with pilot lights. I remember when we had to light some of the windows to, to let some air in y'all. Oh, our Lord have I know there's somebody in here that done ate some fried bologna sandwiches. I, I know there's somebody in here that done had some sugar water. I, I know there's somebody in here that took some bread and honey and, and made a meal. And if God did it before, he'll do it again. You are hungry and you ought to be encouraged. I thank God for Donald Trump. Because the more he acts up, the more God will bless me. The more he acts up, the more he'll prosper. I told a story. I told a story. I told a story. I told a story. In South Carolina once, I think it was Bishop's anniversary, and I told them. Growing up, I used to like to watch Batman and Robin. You better tell us, I used to son. like to watch Batman and Robin. Y'all, y'all, y'all two churches. I, I, while y'all was reading Daily Home Reads, I, I was watching Batman and Robin. And, and, and I like the fact that they used to say, Kapow! And boom. But, but what I like is that Batman always won. But, but I never forgot. That one episode where the Joker and the Penguin, Lord have mercy, sound like Trump and Vance. Uh, they teamed up on Batman and they took away his security belt and, and they trapped him inside the safe. And they said that it was over for Batman. And then when they went to commercial, they put up the words meanwhile. You know, they just put that up meanwhile. And, and so then when they came back from the commercial, they replayed the whole thing. And then when they replayed it, there was Batman, Lord have mercy, standing on top of a building with his hands lifted up. I, I said, my God, how did Batman come out of the circumstance he was in? And my grandmother said, baby, don't worry about that cartoon. He said, it's written in the script. Oh my God. You didn't know what was going to happen Tuesday. But I came to tell you it was written in the script. So be not dismayed. But every time, God will take care of you. This is his way of love of God. God will. My time is up, but I, I've got three more minutes. In, and with this three minutes, I just need you to take a second and flash back over your life and find an instance where God had written something in your script. That you didn't think you were going to make it out of. But somehow, someway, God was in control. You went through some chaos. But, but now you look back and you want to thank God that he passed over you and gave you peace. But just about 30 seconds, put your hands together and tell him thank Brought you out of 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's actually a command. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, everybody ought to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said it to me. Come on, let us go into the house of the Lord. Why? Because there's peace in the house. There's joy in the house. There's happiness in the house. And I'm just excited. I'm making out all right. Anybody excited that you made it out all right? Come on, let's clap our hands in this room. Let's come on, let's just keep the blessed name of the Lord today. We just came to lift him up. But he said, if I can lift it up, I draw all men. And I don't know about you, but I just feel like pulling on this Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah! Come on, open up your mouth. Let's go! 
and they for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Can we give him 15 minutes a day? The Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. Can we give him 15 minutes a day? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Can we give him 15 minutes a day? Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Can we give him 15 minutes a day? Yeah. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy bonds be filled with plenty and thy purses shall burst out with new wine. Can you give him 15 minutes a day? Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Can you give him 15 minutes a day? The Lord is good and his mercy is is everlasting. He is faithful. If we give him 15 minutes a day, we can boldly say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I gave him 15 minutes of my day. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. I gave him 15 minutes of my day. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I gave him 15 minutes of my day. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I gave him 15 minutes of my day. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. I gave him 15 minutes of my day. Surely, <laughs> surely, 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 me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever because I gave him 15 minutes of my day. Give our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. At least 15 minutes in the day. Why? Because he watches over us 24-7. Amen. Dear brother was assistant pastor, yeah. house of God 
church where he's there to him, help him doing all he can, can he can to help us build the church. Amen. Amen. He came in and said, I just want to help. Yes, Even though he had, you know, he's been a, a pastor, yes. elder, yes. but I really thank God for his ministry. He's quiet, but he's firm. Yes, and he knows the word of God. Yes, he's a dynamic teacher yes, of the word of God. Come on, you can put that in. <laughs> Mary, his beautiful wife there, yes. Dickie Des, uh, Dickie Des Andrews, yes. and his daughter. Yes. We thank God for them. Yes. And I know I know he has a word for us tonight. Yes, so I want you, I, want, I said, to introduce the song and present to others the speaker after the selection, none other than Elder and Joshua Andrews, the assistant pastor of the House of God Church. Come on, let us sing.
I truly honor the overseer and his family. There are some beautiful people. Amen. All you got to do is talk for a few minutes and you'll find out just that they're just a beautiful bunch of people. Amen. So I'm so happy to all the bishops and elders and to everyone in their respective places. Uh, I'm a little nervous and sorry I got to have an escape. Bishop Brown. Amen.
That's why some of us are taking the medication that we take. Uh, you all hear what I'm saying tonight? I wrote down a few things that I want to share with you concerning being quiet. Quietness is not a sign that you're weak. You all hear what I'm saying today? You would be surprised how powerful quietness is if you would just be quiet. You don't always need to voice your opinion on everything that comes up. Y'all don't want to hear me today. Jesus knew when to be quiet. Jesus did not respond to every uh, thing they said about him. He did not respond. He did what? What did he do? He was quiet. You will be surprised how powerful quiet, quietness is. Quietness is a statement. You don't realize that when you don't, when you don't uh, address everything and, and try to get back at people and everything, it tells something, it tells people about your character. You'll be surprised that you can look so good if you keep your mouth shut. Quietness is a choice. It is a declaration that speaks louder than any words you can utter. Yes. How many of y'all see, I'm going to give an example, how many of y'all see, if you, you're in church, you see your kids playing back there and they're making noise, and mama turn around and she just, just I know my mama used to do it. We, we, we straightened up and sat down and, and we was quiet. And all it took was a look. She didn't have to open her mouth one time. Anybody know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is a choice. I'm telling you here today that, that you need to be quiet in the face of your enemies. It is a choice for you to be quiet. If we say God fight our battles, but God is not going to fight your battle if you in front of God. God is not going to fight your battle if you trying to fight it. Oh, God, don't give me Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, when you choose to remain quiet, especially in the face of criticism and gossip, you will be, you will not be swayed by anything. How many of you all know what God has, has put in your heart to do? You're going to have people that's going to criticize you. I'm trying to help you tonight. They're, they're, they're going to say things about you. They're going to talk on the phone. Uh, and, and, and a lot of times, they, they don't care that they, they'll talk right there by you. Do y'all hear what I'm saying today? But God said, don't lose sight. Because people criticize you. Here's the thing, we can be saints now, like we understand the assembly, everybody's happy and everything, but the real job is when you get out there, or when somebody is talking about you, you trying to build up the church and somebody say, God ain't called him. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Amen, thank you. <laughs> when you choose to remain quiet, you will not be swayed. How many of you all know what God has signed to your heart? You won't be swayed. Can't nobody push you. Can't nobody tell you. Well, that ain't, that ain't possible. God wants you to stand, especially if God told you. How many of us God has told and we let somebody talk us out of it? Well, I ain't getting no hands now. When you choose, you will not be swayed. I, I, how many of y'all know who you are? No, no, no. You, you, you missed that. I say, how many of you know who you are in Jesus Christ? You look, are you saved? Or does somebody got to tell you you're saved? Oh, come on. Are you real? Did you get the 
the Holy Ghost like the Bible said? Some of us got it because everybody else confessed they got the Holy Ghost so you could confess you had it. If you have it, nobody can tell you what God said. Yourself. 
They expect you to react. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, what, you, what, what we want to really look at is that they also will try to pull you in. Y'all don't believe that. If you keep responding to them, they will pull you in to their negativity, to their criticism. Because, uh, 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 why is that? Why is that? Because they thrive off a of drunk. You have some drama thriving Christians. It ain't, it ain't, it's not, it's not the uh, sinners, hallelujah. I ain't afraid to say it. Even, even if you rock my car, I ain't afraid to say it. They thrive off it. And what I mean is that they can't get enough of it. Here you trying to do pastor and then members, you trying to do all you can to fill up the church. Hallelujah. To be nice to sin. Yes. Yes. And somebody always got something oh to say. My God. My God. Don't follow up there. Let them Hallelujah. let them say what they want to say. Let them do what they want to do. So they don't derail you from what God has told you to do. But believe me, if you do what God tells you to do, it will prosper. If you do what God told you to do. Hallelujah. They don't they, 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 they feed off of chaos. You know, I, I know none of y'all don't have any members like this in your church today. Uh, hallelujah. They show up when things are going great. They show up when you have business. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you have to learn what to attend to and what not to address. Amen. That's right. That's right. There are some things that you don't need to address because it's, it's not going anywhere. That's right. Oh, uh, y'all believe me? Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you what, if I get this phone together. I'll be all right tonight. You got it. You got it so far. Yes, please tell the Lord to help me. Help the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I'm, the only reason I'm going by this phone is because it has all the things that I want to talk to you tonight. Uh, And I'm so nervous I could get over it. Oh, I got dishes here. I got dishes here. I got dishes here. You know who you are. You know who you are. I'm going to be my friend. You know who you are. You know who you are. Come on. Talk what you know, sir. Talk what you know. Are you afraid of what? Yes. They expect you, they, they, these enemies expect you to defend yourself. Uh -huh. You got to tell them and try to explain to them what God has told you to do. Sometimes you just got to leave that alone. If, because all it's going to do is take up time. Hallelujah. Don't mention energy. Don't mention energy. The time and the energy it takes for you to uh, build God's kingdom. You lose sleep. Hallelujah. I'm going to soon be through. Amen. Bishop Brown, you, you really worked it out tonight. Come on, come on, come on. But when you choose to be quiet, when you choose to be quiet, when they are thriving off of drama and chaos, it confuses them. Well, you, well, she was supposed to. 
Did he kick me out of the church today? When you don't pay them no attention, it confuses them. They, they're hoping that you will, that you will uh, cater to them so you can get in a confrontation with them and that people can see your character is changed. Hallelujah. You're talking good, sir. Your quietness disrupts their plan. You don't think people got plans for you? Yes. You don't think people are plotting plans? Yes. Especially if you're working for the Lord. I've seen some hard people that work for the Lord and got tripped up because somebody didn't like something. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Your quietness is again is not weakness. It is strength under control. Strength under control. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to learn how as Christians to control ourselves. You control yourself. What am I talking about? You control yourself in church. You control yourself in the meet meeting. You control yourself when you have a meeting with the deacon board, the trustee board. Why are we fighting each other? Where is the quietness? You all hear what I'm saying? Where is the joy? I, I don't want to come out deacon board stressed. I want to come out the deacon board shouting because when the saints get together on one accord, on one night, just like we have service, believe they can be like that in the deacon board. And you can believe God will be there. God not going to bless. If you control yourself, it is the ability to hold your peace yes. when everything else screams for you to respond. Yes. When you have somebody who's really going through, you can't always shut them up. You have to let them vent. Yes. You have to hold your In fact, 
the best response is what? No response at all. No response at all. Okay, nobody fight by themselves, but it's right. People will wonder when your enemies. How many how many people have ever been charged with doing something you know you didn't do? How did that make you feel? You know you didn't do that. They lie on you. They criticize you. They made you feel bad. And you know you didn't say that. But now it's all over the church. Uh, uh, pastor did this, uh, or whoever. Whatever situation. You know you didn't. How, how did you respond to that? How did you respond to that? The Lord is trying to help us tonight. How did you respond to that? We have to respond. We have to remember to respond just like Jesus responded. It wasn't just a member that, that, that said many things, many terrible things to Jesus. It was the chief priest. It wasn't a door keeper. It wasn't a musician. It was the chief priest that lied on Jesus. And the Bible says Jesus said nothing. Y'all hear what I'm saying? He said nothing. You know why? Because he's too interested in getting to the cross. Right. Yeah. Uh, he's not going to sidetrack and be derailed. But just because the chief priest said it, it's got to be true. No, Jesus saw the cross and all this stuff they're trying to accuse him does not matter. Sometimes something's got to not matter to you so you can keep moving forward. Right. Uh, Y'all want to shout. We should have did that with Bishop Brown. Uh, I'm just about to do it. Listen, when you, when somebody like you in, in the middle of that, believe me, God is working on you. When they mistreat you, Remember that God is working on you. And in the midst of the lie, in the midst of the lie, God strengthens you. In the midst of the lie, God gives you patience. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. In the midst of the line, you could stand up, hallelujah, and say you will not be moved. Ain't nothing going to change just because you. God strengthens you. God gives you wisdom. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Some of us talk so fast without wisdom, and we do more mess than we do good. But if you just hold your peace, Lord, tell me. But the truth is the, in the matter is that you're not giving them the satisfaction of your energy. We're back to energy again. Energy means a lot because I have, hallelujah, I have come from home and you get to the door, you are drained. <coughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. When, you, when you're dealing with people that don't understand, that don't want to listen, that don't understand what you're trying to do to grow the church, a lot of people don't, pastors, y'all know, a lot of people don't understand the vision God is giving you to grow the church. 
y'all hear what I'm saying? And they gonna fight you to the nail. We ain't, we ain't used to do that. The deacons, pastor don't run the church, the deacons run the church. I know y'all, I, 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 it was real quiet when I said that. I, I get used to getting, hold on, don't no, say I don't see it. Oh, Pastor, I ain't trying to tell you that. Pastor, what? <laughs> we don't do that. I say, you don't do what? You don't, you mean you don't see your members on your wall? I say, you trying to do us, do us, I say, I tell you what, turn into the, because I call this court for it. All right. Um, and it'll tell you what you're supposed to do. I'm not, not what I'm telling you to do. I'm, I'm saying what the church is telling you to do. Uh, I know y'all, somebody, somebody said, sit down, okay. Sit down. Sit, sit down. No, I'm posing because uh, if I don't, uh, I'm going to mention one more, a couple more things and I'm, I'm posing. When you don't respond, people will wonder why are you not shaken? Why are you not bothered? Why did you not lower yourself to that level? Because the Lord said, be quiet. How many times, and I'm closing this, how many times did uh, you who are, anybody, I'm mainly talking to ministers and, and, and uh, leaders, how many times God told you to do something and you didn't do it? I look at this side, it's too quiet. How many times God told you to do something and you didn't do it? Because we don't want, listen, we don't want to face criticism. Do you realize the criticism Jesus faced? This is even, uh, when Pilate had it, he wasn't even at the cross yet. When are we going to learn how to live holy, keep moving, when people are talking about it. Yeah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You might walk in the church. Keep walking. They don't have no good time today. Keep walking. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Keep walking. All the time. You don't respond to everything. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I don't like it. Hallelujah. I wish I had the other pastor. Hallelujah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Let's keep go. walking. Keep walking. If, if, if the chief overseer appointed you to go somewhere and you, and, and you coming up the, you coming up the front doors of the church and, and, and people looking like, where are you going? Keep walking. Might have to have your appointment in your hand, but keep walking. Because God sent you here. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You don't have to respond to everything. Let your appointment say what it is. Do y'all hear what I'm saying today? And uh, I thank God for you today. Hallelujah. And I promise I won't use my phone again. <laughs> but what the bottom line is let God fight your battle. Do you hear what I'm saying today? Let God fight your battle no matter what they are. Don't turn around. Don't give up. Let God fight your battles. The reason, and then God is probably saying, uh, I, I want to help him, but he won't let me fight for him. God is not going to fight if you're going to fight. Do you hear what I'm saying? You have to let God fight. Everybody that comes to you don't know about church. Do you hear what I'm saying? Some people come straight off the street and you mess with them if you want to. Do you hear what I'm saying? 
Thank you.